Good afternoon and welcome to Conversations on Showing Up for Kids. My name is Tim Markle. I'm director of the Southern Regional Center for Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs. We're out of the Waysman Center. And I am just so excited today because, well, I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't be excited that it's the last week of Autism Acceptance Month, but I am excited because I, there's, there's two cool things going on this week um, for us. One is this conversation today about the Autism Society, big Autism Society National, and then our three awesome affiliates that we have in Wisconsin and which then filter down um, to other communities and organizations and connections until someday we will have everybody who is affected by autism connected with an autism society so that they can receive the support, the resources, training, whatever it is that they need. Um, so today we're going to be talking with Bob Johnston, who's a parent and a member of the board of directors of the National Autism Society, um, which may be called Autism Society of America. I don't know. So Bob's going to tell us what they're called. Um, it just may be the Autism Society, as in my dad graduated from the Ohio State University, so maybe it is just the Autism Society. Um, but then I also hope that y'all will make space and come back tomorrow at noon, where we'll be talking with Lola Dada Ali, uh, founder of Not Your Mom is Autism, and she's going to be joining us. She's a speaker, writer, and podcaster, and we're going to be talking about brokering hope tomorrow at noon. So I really hope that you can um, join in the conversation with Lola and I. So I'm hoping to have a great conversation today. Um, I have invited some people on to join us to talk about it, but that doesn't mean y'all can't join the conversation. Um, so as just um, introduce yourselves really briefly, um, we'll end with Bob. Rochelle, if you could just introduce yourself really briefly. Hi, I'm Rochelle Chaffee. I'm the brand spanking shiny new executive director for the Southeast Wisconsin region, which means I don't know what I don't know, but I'm learning fast. So that's who I am. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Kirsten. Hi, I'm Kirsten Cooper. I'm the executive director of the Autism Society of Greater Wisconsin. Awesome. And uh, we, we have also invited um, Kirsten, who's <laughs> another Kirsten, who is the executive director of the Autism Society of South Central Wisconsin. Um, but have no fear, um, I can pull double duty and I can put on my board of directors hat for the Autism Society of South Central for when we talk about the different autism affiliates. Um, but hopefully she'll be popping on. And then our esteemed special guest, Mr. Bob Johnston. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing good. Um, I'm not comfortable with this esteemed sort of activity here. <laughs> Okay. Well, you don't want me to call you a degenerate. So I guess something in the middle. So how about my friend and colleague, Bob Johnson? <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm, uh, I'm, I kind of share uh, Rochelle's uh, position in that I'm relatively new to this position, but uh, I'll try and fake it as well as I can. Well, the first thing I, I like people to try to understand is that you know, what, what people know is when they get in contact with usually their local autism affiliate, but all these affiliates are part of this larger organization called Autism Society. How, how is that set up, Bob? How is this all run? Um, that's a good question. We're, we're kind of in the midst right now of, uh, of developing a good comprehensive answer to that. Um, I Technically, I guess it's called the Autism Society of America. But then there are individual affiliates that here in the state of Wisconsin cover three different areas, but we have affiliates, uh, 71 different affiliates in 35 different states, I think it is. Um, Kirsten Cooper is probably a little bit more up on, on that than I am because she's been more, more involved with the Autism Society uh, from that standpoint. Um, but uh, you know, our, our objective, I guess, is to uh, try and be a resource uh, at all levels, whether it be a national level or the affiliate level, all the way to the uh, the individual level, to provide some level of connection, to make sure that uh, people that are affected by autism get the support that they need when they need it. Um, and we're <clears throat> kind of in the midst of a three-year strategic plan to be able to identify kind of five different strategic areas that would include affiliate relations, uh, all the way up to national programs and marketing and branding and technology and things like that. So 
Um, what we do is really try and be a resource on all levels, uh, nationally and locally to the individuals and families that need the support. And we wanna be able to provide that support when they need it. So we're, we're looking at a lot of different things to be able to provide that level of support. So Bob or Kristen or Rochelle, can you give us an example about how the affiliates interact with national, what sort of support that national provides for the local affiliates? You want me to take it? I'll start, but I'm sure that Kirsten will add because I'm learning. Um, we have found um, really an enhanced level of support um, in the last year and a half, I would say, with National. They're really bringing us together as affiliates, um, trying to create and provide more structured programs that we can all take and share across the state that have the same look, feel, messaging, and really the same goal. Um, we have a couple of wonderful programs that have been rolled out that I know that Kirsten and uh, myself are taking advantage of, and that's our VEI program, which is sensory sensitive or sensory friendly vaccine clinics and education surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and um, the additional supports. That's just one massive program that National has shared and rolled out across the affiliate network. Um, for us to utilize and take advantage of. Hey, Tracy, sorry. I, that's my girl from board with people from, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting way late here. But um, so that's just one example of one of the new programs that National has offered for us. There's a plethora of others. So uh, Kirsten, if you want to throw in one as well, I know we both are really excited about the VEI program that National has provided to us to offer to uh, across the state. Um, and I'm thinking of others, but I'll, I'll let you jump in and share one as well. Well, I think in, in addition to program support, one of the great things about being part of a national network is, is that we can turn to the Autism Society of America for support and guidance when we need it. So, you know, whether we have a question about nonprofit administration, or maybe we have a, a question about program development, we can go to the national office and they will either answer our question or they can connect us to another affiliate within the nation, nationwide network um, that we can talk to that has had some experience. Um, and I think being part of this network is just very valuable because um, we can talk to other leaders that are developing similar programs. We can brainstorm together, um, troubleshoot together. Um, and it's been really great. Another thing I would mention. Oh, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Go ahead, Rochelle. Well, I was just going to say, if you look at Bob's lovely background, um, one of the major initiatives that National has done in the last year um, to bring us all together is we're looking and coming with one voice, one message, um, one really call to action moving forward. Uh, as an organization across, that's been across the states, uh, we all had a slightly different look, feel, uh, so they've really done a wonderful job, spent extensive time really bringing us uh, the affiliate network together. So we look, feel, sound, rally cry around the same things. So I just, I have to give a shout out to the national organization and the extensive work they did to help our brand, to help our message um, at great cost to them personally, so that we really start to come together and have a whole nother level of look and feel and organization. Um, and that was really spearheaded and led by the wonderful national organization. And that deserves a huge shout out. Thank you, Rochelle. That's nice of you to say that. Yeah, when, when our president, uh, Chris Banks started, um, he received a lot of feedback from the initial uh, affiliates uh, regarding brand messaging. And uh, I kind of grew up in a, in a brand world with my family's cookie business, but uh, having, having that, that consistency of message and that consistency of service is really appropriate and very important. Um, I can think back to our most recent board meeting where we were talking about brand consistency and consistency of consumer experience. Uh, and the, the, the example was given that when you walk into a McDonald's here in Milwaukee, you get a very similar experience as uh, if you walk into a McDonald's. And I, when we were in Beijing, I walked into the McDonald's there and it was the same experience. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's really important that we have that kind of unified brand 
Um, but you know, we're, we're looking at, at five different kind of strategic areas of focus and that marketing branding is, is a big one. Uh, the new statement of the connection is you, I think speaks to what both Kirsten and Rochelle are talking about. Um, that connection can be seen on a national level we want to try and connect the affiliates through various technology that, that we're looking at developing through the website and things like that. Uh, but then we also want to be able to provide connection uh, for the affiliates to each other and ultimately to the, uh, to the children and to the family that are affected by autism. So that new positioning statement of connection is you is really very important in carrying that new brand of interwoven fabric uh, at all levels to make sure that there is a connection, an interconnection of the relationship between Autism Society of America, the local affiliates and then the families and the individuals that we serve. But, you know, we're looking then at um, developing a much more authoritative source of uh, autism related services domestically and internationally. Uh, you know, the internet is open to everybody in Europe as well. And we want to be able to provide a good resource from that standpoint. We're looking at uh, a number of different areas, database and technology, advocacy, national programs that you spoke of a little bit, and then the affiliate relations. So um, in terms of database and technology, we're developing a much more cost efficient long term systems architecture sort of blueprint that will effectively streamline and, use, and utilize data much more efficiently. Um, we want to be able to create a digital and structural audit of our current system and data capabilities that will identify more nationwide solutions and opportunities that we can incorporate into, uh, into our future uh, development. But, you know, we're, we're in the midst of a three-year implementation plan and hope to pursue a network adoption of, um, of lots of activities from a technology standpoint that will provide connection uh, to the to the families and the individuals, but also to uh, the affiliates and then the affiliates back to uh, to ASA. Uh, in terms of advocacy, we're looking at uh, kind of three different areas, I guess you could say. Uh, we kind of refer to it as the just as the Justice Center, but uh, the Autism Society or the Autism Center for Empowerment, Advocacy, and Justice will address important issues surrounding safety, education, employment. Uh, general well-being of, uh, of individuals with autism. Uh, we want to be able to provide assistance to the local affiliates as they serve uh, the areas that they are responsible for. And then law enforcement and first responder training and employment programs that can be coordinated and developed nationally, but then implemented on a local basis. Uh, the national programs that, that we're in the midst of right now, uh, some are being implemented, the vaccine program that, that Rochelle and Kirsten spoke about, uh, law enforcement or first responder training, like I said, one that I'm really kind of uh, getting more active in right now is our water and wandering safety program. Um, many, many families are very concerned uh, regarding swimming in water. I think, you know, just about every summer we get a story in the news about a child that wandered away from the home and um, unfortunately is found at the bottom of somebody's pool or pond or something like that. So we're putting together a water and wandering program which fits in real well with the product that my wife and I invented. Um, and we're working with a, a significant um, swimming retailer, Kiefer, who we licensed our product to. Um, and then through them, we're working with YMCAs and uh, all sorts of different organizations um, and outlets to be able to provide water safety education to kids so that they can uh, learn how to swim and be more safe around the water. Um, and then obviously it all comes down to the affiliates. Um, we want to be able to be seen as a resource for the affiliates to provide maybe a toolkit um, so that if there are questions, the affiliate has something a little bit more substantial to refer to in terms of their daily operation or monthly operation or yearly operation of their affiliate. Uh, want to be able to build greater connectivity between the affiliates, but then also we want to try and expand that affiliate base. Um, where there are there are major cities across the United States that unfortunately do not have an autism society of this city. So, you know, Chicago, for example, we want to try and develop an affiliate in Chicago to be able to provide greater level of support to those families. So 
Um, you know, our overall strategic plan, like I said, is about three years, um, but, but I think we're, we're well on our way to be able to provide greater connectivity and, and support to everybody across the board. And that's and I know on behalf of the Auto Society of South Central is we found it very valuable to connect to the national organization as we were talking about the different ways to structure our board of directors and getting some help from the national level because a lot of the, the people that are starting and running the local affiliates are parents and family members and may not necessarily have experience as being on a board of directors. And so being able to tap into that expertise so that we can learn about how to, how to act better together, how to reach people better together mm -hmm. um, has been really valuable as well. Um, so I, I'm wondering, Kirsten and, and Rochelle, I mean, Bob mentioned um, water and wandering. Um, do you, are there, do you, I guess I, I know the answer. So I believe for South Central that wandering and water safety is, is really important that we have families talk about this all the time. Are you guys seeing the same sort of concerns from families? Go ahead. <laughs> we're both going. Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, I, we're very grateful that the national organization is looking at this as one of the three programs to roll out in the next couple of years. Um, and we are, we're ready for it. I think it's a big concern of our families and um, looking forward to bringing that back locally. Yes. Tim, to um, even dive in a little bit deeper, uh, in Southeastern Wisconsin, we have had uh, a program for a few years that even just starts the introduction to get our families with kiddos used to being in the water, knowing what the water is, talking about the water, even if it's just one day, test it out. Um, we ran out a private space um, through a state, uh, through um, the Milwaukee Park system. Um, there's a training that goes to the lifeguards and the staff um, to just say, hey, you may have individuals on the spectrum here. Um, don't overreact if they're in the pool. Don't overact if they're testing out the water. It, water, this experience is brand new for them. Um, so, but it's really, we can't do it the justice with one day. So our conduit started with just providing families an opportunity who may have been hesitant. As we know, some of our families are. They don't necessarily wanna go and experience water, take their kiddos to a pool or something like that for fear of maybe how, uh, what will happen because it's a change or it's a, it could be a surprise. And we know what happens sometimes with individuals um, in those loud sensory environments. But that said, our families still need to be preparing their littles um, or their mediums or their bigs to get used to the water because we know the statistics show wandering ends up oftentimes in water. And if they're not experienced with water, they don't know what that looks like and feels like it can end in tragedy. So uh, we really needed to focus and make this program much larger. I can't wait for it uh, because I feel like we've been putting a Band-Aid over it really at this point, but giving the parents an opportunity to at least start to think about having their child in that, that environment but there really hasn't been um, a structured program that we've been able to launch yet that's all encompassing and it's necessary before we have tragedy in the news in Wisconsin. Um, I think that, that's, uh, that this is gonna be a fabulous program and it'll dovetail and really take that little basic that we're doing to a whole nother level. So I, can't, I personally can't wait for this one. Well, it's one of the leading causes of death um, in autism is drowning. Um, and it was really, you know, largely the driving force behind my wife's idea to create Papler was, uh, you know, I grew up on the water and in the water. And we were giving Harley swimming lessons at uh, St. Francis in, in South Milwaukee. And I went walking into the water next to him and pretty soon all he could see was the tip of his nose. And um, clearly he loves the water. Most kids with autism like the water because of the uniform compression that it puts on their body. Uh, they just don't know how to react to it. Um, and so Jody initially came up with the idea for Paddler to take some, um, take some pool noodles and strap them together. And, you know, I, I would take Harley out to the local pools and there were kids, you know, autism and non-autism coming up to him to take it off. And parents were wondering where it was and where did I get this and all that. And, 
you know, if it wasn't for my wife pushing and pushing and pushing, I don't know that we ever would have done anything with it. So, you know, she gets a lot of the credit, but um, eventually, you know, we got a patent on it and licensed it to Kiefer. And, you know, Kiefer is this huge national international swimming company that, you know, when, when we approached them with the idea for Water and Wandering, it turns out that the president's son a week or so before that was just diagnosed with autism. Wow. And, um, I mean, you know, the timing was great from that standpoint. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we're providing value that they're not seen as doing something specifically for his son. But, um, you know, this is a huge concern nationally, internationally. And we feel very fortunate to be able to uh, work with Kiefer. We're going to develop a sort of um, a package, if you will, of three or four different items. Uh, Kiefer... Uh, the namesake Adolf Kiefer won the gold medal in the 100 meter backstroke back in the Jesse Owens Olympics. <laughs> he is the first person in the world to swim the 100 meter backstroke in under a minute and won the gold medal at the Olympics. After he retired, he started this company called Adolf Kiefer and Associates. He invented, he invented the, uh, the kickboard, um, the nylon swimming suit, excuse me, I'm turning off my phone here, the nylon swimming suit that Speedo engineered um, that was largely introduced by, by Kiefer. If you go to a swim meet, you see those lanes, lane markers. Those are patent developed by Kiefer to reduce turbulence in between the racing lanes in a pool. I mean, they are the innovators in the swimming industry. So to be able to work with them and develop some products that we can then take to market uh, to help along with some collateral material for teaching and things like that. It's going to be a very in-depth, comprehensive program that hopefully is going to save a lot of lives and uh, make it a lot better for a lot of kids with autism. Um, we're, we're already in, in initial conversations with, with the YMCA and various swimming outlets. Uh, we've had probably four or five meetings with Kiefer now. Um, they're definitely in. They're going to introduce us to other uh, manufacturers and providers in that space so that we can build a good national program. And then we'll consistently come back. This will be part of the national marketing plan, the annual plan. So, you know, this isn't, these aren't just one-off kinds of things. They'll be consistent, they will be consistent elements on our national marketing plan so that every year we can drive the message that much farther and help that many more families. And what I like is it's a very proactive approach to safety mm -hmm. is it's acknowledging that yes, there are problems, yes, there are differences, but there are also solutions. Mm -hmm. And that if we can plan ahead and if we can work with safety plans and if we can work on skill building, then our kiddos and adults are gonna be a lot better off. Yeah, um, yeah. They're gonna be kept safer and that's what we want. And, and I, that, I really like that multi-layered approach. Well, and that comes back to the connection. You know, the, the, the connection is you and it's, it's all of us on this call and then some to be able to provide a level of support that perhaps needs a little bit more reinforcing in, in a lot of different areas to families to make life that much better and that much easier for all the families that are affected by it and that they're getting the support when they need it now. And I, I, th that brings up a fantastic point in my mind and that's I know that originally when you know, autism started to to really hit people's consciousness and started to hit the national and international landscape. A lot of the focus was on families helping their children and therapy for for the children. But gosh darn it all, all those children grew up. Yeah. And so now I know that, you know, I know South Central, but the affiliates and also national is not only are you having to talk to parents and families and this first um, diagnosis of a young child or a school-age child, but we're having adults yeah. diagnosed with autism as well. What sort of initiative or ideas or involvement are the autism societies having with adults that are on the spectrum? Well, the, the employment program, I think, is pretty significant in that regard, too. Um, you know, there's, there's this, this saying that kids are falling off the cliff, the cliff being the supports through Medicaid and various, you know, government supports that the kids get up until 18. But then what happens when those kids age out of those supports and fall off the cliff, so to speak? 
um, and we're developing national employment programming. Uh, we've had um, you know meetings already with uh, with with cabinet level officials to help develop strategies from an employment standpoint and adult care sort of standpoint too. And we're starting to see a lot of uh, of local residential development too. Um, over the years, I've seen I've had conversations with you know dozens of of people and families. I was just in a conversation last week actually with one of your board members, Rochelle who uh, is trying to develop a residential program. Uh, more and more, we're hearing that in the local community and we're glad to be a part of that growth. Tracy, did you have a question regarding that before I answer some additional or add some additional? I have a question and kind of in general, and I don't know, um, because this is probably something I necessarily didn't think of for autism, but I think it's definitely very important. So that opened my eyes for sure. But I'm wondering then what kind of training are some of the providers of like CLTS then given for this kind of a swimming or you know working with children that have differing needs? Because I think that's a, another big component of this is how do we train the people who are in the communities working with some of these kids through some of the programs or the waiver programs that the kids are using? Well, understand that we're still, we're, we know we're gonna do the program. The program has not been completed, so to speak, to be rolled out to the local affiliates, okay? Um, but I see a definite area of involvement, yeah, through the state programs. Uh, personally, I'm on the governor's council for autism. And so I'm, I'm in regular monthly communication, quarterly communication with many people that are part of DHS. And uh, when the time is right, we'll be getting in more, more in depth and talking to Nicole Miller and, and everybody there at the council to make sure that they're you know, informed and supportive of this kind of an effort too. But if you have any specific ideas or anything that you wanna contribute, I'm your connection. So uh, you know, let, us, let all of us know so that we can uh, bring it up appropriately and, and make sure that your 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 concerns are properly addressed. And yeah, I I'll, yeah, I have a, I have. Well, it's it's just one instance, but I I think it, I'm thinking that it's even though it's one instance, I kind of feel like it's more pervasive than just that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'll definitely do that. Thank you, Bob. Sure, reach out and you know send me an email or give me a call, and uh, we're more than glad. And Tracy, I also think um, you hit on a good point regarding like CLTS as the program is defined, as we figure out what it looks like for longer term. I envision us uh, creating a communication structure, somewhat like what we do for our bike camp. So we have a program that we know qualifies for CLTS. Uh, we do an intensive marketing campaign around that, including to county folks, including to the individuals that are meeting with families that say, okay, did you know this program was out here? Does your child qualify? Would they be interested in that? Did you know you could use your waiver dollars to attend such a camp? So that is something that when we kick this off, I envision, at least that's what we're hoping to do. And I'm sure Bob will be totally on board with that as well is there's another component to this, which includes education yeah. um, regarding the program. And as well, we're finding many of our families don't know about a lot of these programs. They don't know their waiver dollars could qualify for them. We run up uh, against this with bike camp. So that's been an aha moment for us uh, in Southeastern Wisconsin, the last two years that any program like that. And we also have someone that's dedicated on our staff that really helps shepherd families. It's a, it can be a tricky maze or to know what code do I use? How do I do this? Do I bundle it with membership? So we have someone that's getting the training. As a matter of fact, uh, the sassy Tiffany just came to me and said, Racine, we don't have a contact. We need to make a contact with CLTS. So we're actually trying to dive into providing a different level of support. Once we have the program identified and we know it qualifies, communicating that and then helping families know how to even sign their kiddos up or use their dollars that they have. Um, because I don't think that's universal to just swimming. We're seeing that across. Oh, the yeah, that yeah. I figured that might be a little bit of what you're wondering about, like, how do yeah. we educate even the individuals that we work with our families to know. So yeah. that's a, another component that will hopefully be included as we roll out this program. Yeah, 
good. No, that's yeah. good. And I think, I, well, I think too with CLTS, and we do a lot of that here with our families as well as, you know, getting them on board because they're little, you know, we get the little ones. And so, I mean, and I actually have just um, been appointed to the CLTS board for the state now. So I feel like that's good. So if you need anything, I can hopefully say something there for that. But um, I, I do believe that families need that opportunity to at least know like what kinds of things and how to how to connect them with those things because coding is, is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I know for vision for sure, you know, I don't know it's new and how, what code do I use and how do I do it and how much are you charging? And so that's a whole other, you know, that's a whole other story besides what this is. But um, I, I do think that providers of swimming especially or having some oversight by CLTS and how they're providing these opportunities for kids and why I think it's so important that, you know, when you're working with kids in a swimming pool that you're aware of those and, and, and educating parents too, because parents don't know. I mean, I didn't know, you know, like, so I get that that's kind of where I'm going is like, how do we make sure that I, and I'm sure Bob, you probably thought of that too, but how do we going forward, make sure that even the providers of children with autism on CLTS or even just in general have these, have this knowledge. Yeah. The good news is that, you know, we, we think we're really on to a good idea here. Uh, this comes from, you know, feedback from all the affiliates that they hear a lot of questions and concerns from their families to identify, you know, swimming and water water safety and stuff is a is a significant concern. Um, you know, sometime about this time of year next year is when we're really going to be rolling it out. This isn't something that we're looking to initiate tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of planning and meetings and, and organization that goes into this um, to really make it good and effective on a national level as well as on a local level. So we're, we're trying to take as much time as we can to properly investigate all of the different areas, CLTS being one of them, YMCA's being another relationship, um, other swimming play. I mean, there's so many different areas that we need to touch and make sure they are properly informed. Um, poor Ali Tashi at the national office is overrun with this is just one program. Um, but, you know, she's very detailed. Everybody is very detailed in wanting to make sure that we're touching all the bases and making sure that, that we're, you know, communicating this the right way to the right people to make, you know, the best impact. And, and like I said, to a certain extent, this is still kind of a learning experience. You know, we'll roll it out next year. And I'm sure that, you know, as we look back on next year's experience, we'll find ways to be able to do it more efficiently in years to come. So uh, we're, we're trying to learn as we can, but, um, you know, we're not going to learn everything in this first year. We're, we're going to continuously uh, improve it and update it. And, and, you know, five years from now, we'll be doing things more efficiently than we are, you know, in the first year. And to Tim, to get back to the original question that you asked as well, which was regarding supports and additional services for adults on the spectrum, um, Bob covered employment, which I know Kirsten, Kirsten, and Rochelle will all uh, echo that we do get significant calls, signif significant uh, concerns about employment for adults on the spectrum. So that initiative, I think, having national spearhead that hopefully it will also trickle down and provide program services and connections that the affiliate group can use. All three affiliates also provide support groups. We, I think we could speak to the fact that socially um, providing a safe space for adults on the spectrum to feel comfortable where they don't have to mask where they can be themselves is something that all three of us affiliates uh, come together and have recognized as a need to offer across the state. Um, I was also even thinking of a shout out to the Wiseman Center and the handsome and talented Tim Markle, who brought us all together with uh, Love on the Spectrum, um, the movie presentation that we were able to offer to subgroups, this, uh, our different groups, uh, at primarily, I think two of us, or maybe even all three of us, we wanted it to be for our adults on the spectrum, a special viewing and panel discussion for them. That just happened this month. Um, I think advocacy is an opportunity for our, and, and as my affiliate, um, and also Kirsten has really spearheaded this. She's really done a lot of the heavy lifting in the Capitol. And um, in the last few years, we've been able to really provide a microphone, a voice um, to adults on the spectrum to give them that platform to really be able to speak on their own, not having us represent. 
Tracy, you probably will get a kick out of that. That was a life lesson that came out of our work that we're doing with board with people with developmental disabilities. So I think for adults on the spectrum uh, and Kirsten jump in if I'm missing something, but we all have identified that that is a group that um, needs additional support. We're trying to rally behind that. Um, I can tell you an init another initiative that we're looking at. We do have a recent diagnosis or new to autism presentations for individuals right now, including a wonderful Next Steps book that focuses on families that, get it, that are getting that diagnosis early. We're seeing an influx of individuals that are getting that diagnosis as adults. So we're currently developing um, what does new to autism look like for an adult? Um, because it's a very different conversation. It's led by, we, uh, so we're actually gonna have a board member lead those discussions in the future, um, those structured topics and share resources and information um, because it is a different type of conversation when you get that diagnosis as an adult. And we have a vision of trying to make a, a couple of versions of next steps. Um, including uh, a statewide one that focuses on resources and information for adults on the spectrum. So I'm, I'm okay to share that now. Kirsten, we put it out to the universe. We got to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking to come together and cr create a resource. That's a phenomenal resource that's unique to the state of Wisconsin, but we've recognized, um, and I'm talking a lot. So Kirsten, I'm going to turn it over to you in case I'm missing a few other things as well. Well, I think you covered um, a lot about the programs that that um, support autistic adults. I think the only other thing I would add is that it's really important to the Autism Society as a network to, to be as inclusive as possible in our board of directors and our committees and those that are participating in strategic planning. Um, so we're, we're trying to include autistic adults at all of those levels as well. And then with the Autism Society South Central, in addition to all those things, which totally agree with, and I'm totally excited to, to figure out, I mean, one of the, I, I agree that question of, you know, I just got diagnosed as a 30 year old. What, what does that mean? Um, I think is a really great question to come together and answer. Um, but I know we've had self-advocates around our area have started the integral conference, which is a conference put on by adults are in the spectrum. And it's not just for adults are in the spectrum, but it's to teach all of us about spectrum life. And so I really appreciate the fact that, you know, they're just like, you know, we want our voices to be heard. We, we, want, we want to be the ones in charge. We want to be in charge of our lives. We want to be in charge of the messaging about us. And it's just, it's been wonderful to see that. So Tim, to piggyback off that one more thing for Southeastern Wisconsin, um, within our five-year strategic plan, I have identified that adults on the spectrum is really our growth opportunity. When I did our SWOT analysis, I would say that's where we're falling down, where we'd like to do more. So we've identified that group. Um, we've heard the cries for additional support, services, and connections. So our strategic plan, um, which will hopefully, and I'm pretty confident it will, will nestle so nicely with what national is going to roll out to us longer term. We have made that um, a focus for the future in Southeastern Wisconsin, in particular, the adults on the spectrum. We see that the services for littles are here. They stair step to teen here. By the time you get to adults on the spectrum in Wisconsin, your options and your levels of support and connectivity are just not what we want them to be, nor what we know the state is capable of. So that's our mission. Awesome. So fi final thoughts. Um, you know, I and this this is where it's horrible being the host because I also have some insider knowledge. Um, but I know that the three societies, I believe anyway, are working better together than they ever have um, with some common mission, common messaging, um, sharing of resources. Um, but it's really great to see because we know that it's all the same family. It doesn't matter what county or state in nationals um, case that a family lives in. If they are affected by autism, um, 
they probably need some resources, supports, or at least some answers to some questions and maybe some direction. Um, well, that's why it's so important, I think, for us to have that brand continuity. So it is a similar customer experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, walk into the McDonald's in Milwaukee versus the McDonald's in Beijing or come to the Autism Society in California versus the Autism Society of South Central versus Greater Wisconsin versus, you know, Massachusetts or wherever you are. We really want to kind of foster that connectivity uh, in all areas and all levels. Um, the website that we're looking at is going to be a big step towards greater connectivity. Um, that will give the end user, the family, the individual that much more access, as well as access between the affiliates uh, to the mm -hmm. national scene and to themselves or between themselves. It's uh, it, Chris, is, Chris Banks, our, our new president, has really, I think, um, energized uh, some real significant um, developments that um, I, I'm really excited about for the future. And we're a big reason why I accepted the position to join the board. Um, I, I really like, like Scott Badish, the old director was great, did a lot of wonderful things. And I think that, uh, that Chris is gonna continue to extend that. Um, it's, it's really kind of an exciting time to be part of it because I think that, yeah, there, there is a, um, a greater level of connectivity, I guess you could say, between the affiliates um, and it's really fun to, to see that and be part of, of the growth that is occurring now. And also, Tim, I'd like to add um, that we found through COVID, through this experience, that the world of virtual is not as scary as we thought. <laughs> so we're questioning as affiliates, why am I doing trails? Why is Kirsten doing trails? Why is Kirsten doing trails? If we're going to keep some of these platforms virtual for the future, maybe we can come together, have the same synergy and that same energy, but not um, duplicate efforts. So I think we're, if I can ever get my, my schedule to settle down, we're having <laughs> monthly affiliate meetings again, um, which to, to really just try to leverage our strengths and come together and have programs that are across the state will benefit everyone. So if you have a teen in transition, that's not unique to Southeastern Wisconsin. Oh. That's not unique to greater Wisconsin. So we're working, we wanna work harder, smarter, not harder. Um, so we're, we're looking at trying to do that. I love, uh, I think someone, Tracy said power in numbers. Yes, we want power in numbers. We also wanna share the work. So, and, and, and the reap the benefits and, and really have that same messaging across our state. So I'm excited to work on, Trails is our another, ne the next one that we're like, hmm, why are all three of us doing this? Maybe we could do this together smarter. So that's what we're looking at as well. Love it. Kirsten, any final thoughts before we let you get back to just, just so you guys know, Kirsten is in the final stages of a state. What is a conference sponsored by the Autism Society of Greater Wisconsin that invites families all across Wisconsin to come together, to learn together, to grow together, to share together. Um, it's really a gathering place for all families um, in Wisconsin, and I know she is anxiously waiting to get back to planning um, the final details for that conference. Um, yes, I'm very excited to be back in person for this conference on Friday and Saturday. Um, but uh, my final thought is just that being on this call with Bob, Rochelle, working with Kirsten and you, Tim, um, it's it's all just very exciting. I think. The future is bright for the Autism Society and um, look forward to the things that we can do together. Tim, thank you very much for putting this together. You're, you're muted, Tim. I will let you have the last word, Bob. No, I don't want the last word. I want you to have No, no, it. no, it's all yours. No, well, it's okay, then I'll close it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you to you. Um, it's been, uh, I don't remember exactly how many years ago that I met you, um, but it, it really is a great relationship. And I really appreciate what you're doing for us here today, uh, what you do for the autism community across the state, uh, what you do for the individual families and all the things along the way to be able to help increase our voice. Um, you are a connection. You are a very valuable connection. 
And uh, I know I'm one of many people that, that voice that, but uh, I, I look forward to seeing you on Saturday, Friday and Saturday in the Dells. It really is nice, everything that you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I mean, you guys know how much I love the work that you're doing. Um, I know that you're passionate about it. Um, and I thank you so much for all that you are doing. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I will let everybody know who is registered um, that this recording is then available. But thank you so much for being here today. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Tim. Thank you.